but I'm super stoked to catch up with my good friend Jeff Glass on the other end of the pane of window that you're watching right now, who is a good friend of mine and a business partner as well. We're in, in the fitness, fitness for Five pipeline together, and I met him in person back in May when we shot a bunch of videos for the actual website, which they're on there, and they're in the app, so make sure to go over there and check out some of the videos I created. I'm going to be having a huge amount coming up in the future as well. But anyway, Jeff and I met um, virtually probably in the late winter last year. Then we met in person and we just like hit it off. And there's some people in your life that you meet, you just kind of like automatically know you're gonna be good friends with going forward. Jeff is one of those people. We've had a lot, a lot of deep conversations since the day I met him. And we haven't gotten a chance to like sit down and chat man to man in a while as friends, because we've been doing working on this, this project for so much of our time. And I remember about a month and a half ago, maybe even less than that, he was coming to me talking about his recent um, relocation from, um, not Las Vegas, from Nevada to Texas. And the toll that was taking on his life and his body and his whole mind frame and stuff. Jeff is a family man. He's a Christian guy. He has a couple kids. He's a really good dude. Um, but he has that internal fire burning in him. I could just see it in his eyes when I met him that he wants to do good for himself. He wants to get in better shape. He wants to get in better mind frame. He wants to connect all the dots with his diet and all this stuff. And he's always like scratching the surface of that, but he doesn't quite cross the line completely into that world, into my world, as I call it. And we had a couple of conversations before I left town when I saw him in person. I was going to help him with some things pertaining to his lifestyle and his health and his fitness and stuff. And then like we kind of lost track because we got busy with the project. Then he comes to me and he says, I've been, I'm going to start training for marathons. I'm going to start running. I'm going to do all this stuff once he made his relocation to Texas. So I want to know kind of about where you are, where you stand right now, Jeff, and how you've been doing with your health and your fitness and how you feel you got derailed, so to speak, when it came to the relocation factor. And then by now, you're all settled in and moved in. So where are you at right now with your health and fitness? I want to know. Coming from, right. I'm, I'm like, you know, exercise six hours a day guy. And you're like, I don't mean to sound offensive when I use the word dad bod because everyone is so sensitive these days. But let's just call spade a spade. The dad bod mm -hmm. is somebody who's basically 40 plus, has a little extra weight and maybe in their stomach usually, or in their body, they're kind of soft, they're kind of frustrated and they're disappointed in themselves. And they just throw their arms in the air and say, F it. And they say, oh, I got a dad bod and they deal with it. So you have actually used the word dad bod to me a couple of times when we talked. I said, hey, I'm, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm a stereotypical dad bod right now and I'm looking to change it. So where right. are you right now in your journey? That's basically what I'm trying to get to. Yeah, thanks, k -Rell, man. It's great to connect with you, brother. And same thing when we met and we got on this project. For me, I believe in, like, if we're going to set a destination, you and I are going to drive from where I'm near Dallas, Texas, out to, uh, I'm planning a trip to Washington, D.C. So we're going to go to Washington, D.C. Well, if we want to go to Washington, D.C., we're going to put that in our GPS. But we're not getting anywhere unless we put in what, where we're at. And I believe in taking a hardcore inventory of where you're at, being honest with yourself, I'm a dad, I'm over 40, I'm, I'm fat, I got weight to lose. And we don't want to tell ourselves this in a non-offensive, you know, culture or society. And uh, if I live in this mindset of I'm not in fear of offending others, why would I be in fear of offending myself, right? So that's really where I started. I took inventory of this. And I'm going to give you all the excuses because we're just going to F those and throw them out. And the excuses are, you know, I come from a family that struggles with obesity. I work from home. I have little kids. I'm married. Uh, my wife is uh, naturally shredded and ripped. So it's, it's, she can out eat me sometimes. And she just, <laughs> she has a different, you know, genetic disposition, right? She just, uh, she's naturally thin. And uh, so for me, I'm not that way. It's like, I feel like I go running and I put on some weight. So we have oh, wow. two very colliding lifestyles, right? Um, I do put on muscle well. So that's the thing. My legs are strong. My upper body, I have a lot of upper body strength. But as far as um, putting on mass, I can put on muscle and I can put on fat, both fairly quickly, fairly okay. quickly. But I don't want to put on the muscle under the fat, right? So I need to talk to someone like you to get more strategically planning towards this. So I'm one of those where I want to go all in. So I, I had all the excuses. This is what I'm struggling with. Different lifestyle. You're raising kids. You're, you're taking them. You're trying to eat somewhere. You're going to a fast food place, which you shouldn't. We try to go to the healthy fast food places, which is, you know, like going to, uh, you know, visit a brothel and there's the, the healthy one there. It's like, it's still just a bad place to go. Stay away from there, right? There's yeah. still things that are going to permeate and affect your body. So learning to eat cleaner and learning to uh, just live a different lifestyle. So I have this mindset of, I listen to David Goggins. I love that dude. I just, 
I like people that just hit it with you raw. And he talks about how we we operate as people like 40% of our capacity, right? I don't mean to sound, I, I need to interrupt you for two seconds because I got to get this off sure. my chest before we go any farther because it, yeah. it's relevant and funny to what you just said. And I've gotten a, a PM once from someone that said, you remind me of a white David Goggins. <laughs> <laughs> a white man versus David many. Goggins. And I laughed. They said, you know David Goggins? I'm like, yeah, I know who he is. Yeah. like, man, you're just like him. You're, you're like military, yeah. high yawn, you're ripped and blah, blah, blah. It's a compliment, man. I look more like uh, John Travolta from the Pulp Fiction days. Like, that's my body status right now. You know? <laughs> so, but, uh, you know, so you got good. the, yeah, you, you got the compliment there. Uh, so, so I, I realized that there's, you know, an ever-changing society and our economic client, our, uh, climate, our culture, everything that's going on right now, I look at what is, what are some things that I can control in a healthy way? It's not good to try to control everything, but I can tr control a lot of my fitness and my finances. Mm -hmm. And how can I infuse health in both of those? And I've been very much on the finance side, building businesses. And I said, well, what if I took that principle and I applied it over to fitness? I'm, I'm operating over here in this spectrum. Let's bring it over to here. So I'm an extremist. I'm like, hey, how can we build from zero to a million dollar company? And I, I reverse engineer it and I go that direction and I help other companies go that direction. So why can't I do that for my fitness as well? So I, I didn't consult with a personal trainer like I should have with you, but I, I didn't ask people what was good for my body. I said, I need to develop my mindset. And I'm not recommending this um, for everyone because it's, I'm not a physician. I'm not a personal trainer. So this is not medical advice or personal training advice at all. But what I did is I said, you know what? I want to run five miles a day. I want to, so I'm going to start out walking. So um, I struggled to do five miles a day. So what I did is said, I'm going to do 10. Well, when I did 10 miles a day, I could do five. Five was simple. And then I said, well, I really want to do, you know, um, you know, half a marathon, right? So I worked my way up. I, I forget the exact numbers, but I hit different scales. So half a marathon is 13.1 miles. And I said, I want to run that, but I'm going to start out jogging it and walking it. But what I did is I said, okay, on a Monday, I'm going to do a marathon Monday. I, I did an entire marathon. I did 26.2 miles. I measured it on the watch and I did it just for the more the mindset of it. Uh, you know, 11, 12 you miles. Just did that you just did that Monday? No, no. I did this about um, when we spoke about a month oh, and a half ago. ago. Okay. Yeah. So I'm going to give you the, the roller coaster of this because Marathon Monday is coming up again this coming Monday okay. uh, because I'm doing a reset. So I, I hit the marathon and I'm, I'm 11 to 12 miles in and I'm peaking. I just feel like I can accomplish anything. Like I'm on it. Like I'm feeling good. My body's moving. My legs are feeling good. And, and then I'm, I'm 22, the last four miles, like I want to die. Like I'm just, I'm, I, 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 I took my shoes off cause they felt so damn heavy. Like wow. I just felt like I couldn't go on. So, but that's where people quit. They quit right there at the end. They quit the last 10%, the last 5%. But then, um, I did it. I made it. I, I hit it at 1159 PM. I hit 26.2 miles. Wow. And I, I still work that day. I brought on a new client. I, uh, I had lunch with my family. I fit it into my work day. Wow. So I did, amazing. I did it and I did it in about six or seven increments and I hit it. And then I started doing 13.1 miles and that felt like nothing. Mm -hmm. and here's where the trouble came in. As I kicked back, I pulled back. I, I kind of took some easy days. I went and hung out with the fam. I went into dad bod psychology, right? And I started doing some of those early habits and I fell off again. So now I'm, I'm right. I'm oscillating between six to 10 miles. So I'm doing another reset kind of like when you do a fast, and I'm going to do, um, I'm going to do uh, a full marathon this coming Monday. So I'm training for it now, getting my body ready. Again, uh, very sore. I'm 41. I can keep up with people that are 20, 25. But the next morning, it looks a lot different. It looks like I just had about 25 beers trying to get out of bed. The next morning, I'm like, oh, finish him, right? I'm just ready to pass out. I'm, I'm, I'm not feeling good. So I'm learning that what, what were some of those signals? Maybe I didn't get enough hydration, mm -hmm. checking on my diet. Uh, my stretching. So what that taught me was, yes, it really helped my mindset, but I want to tell people that there was some, some unhealthiness in it as well. Overall, I would say healthy, you know, yeah. but I think uh, going back on it, having never done a marathon before, um, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, and I'm, I probably can afford to lose about 40, 50 pounds. I'm, I'm, I'm mid two hundreds. So someone my size doing that probably wasn't the wisest decision physically. But mentally, it needed to happen. Mentally, it was it was necessary, and I needed to show myself possible. 
And I think that's where we operate a lot. Like David Goggins talks about, it's like David Goggins ran, I don't know, so many miles straight and didn't sleep for days and done all this. So I knew my body's capable of it, but, um, so now I'm doing a reset again and saying, okay, I'm gonna do the marathon again. I'm hoping to get into triathlons, marathons this coming summer and fall coming up. So I'm training now to get my body ready for that. Not to come in first place, my competition, like I teach a lot in my business, my competition is me. Mm -hmm. You know, there is no spoon. There is no competition. It's the dude in the mirror. It's the fat ass in the mirror that's working on losing weight and saying, look, I'm capable of this. Taking that hard inventory and saying, you know what? I got it. I got to suck it up. If you're going through marriage counseling, you're like, Hey, my marriage is bad. My marriage rocks. I have a great marriage. But when we've gone through challenges, we've had to take inventory like, Hey, this is where we're at. Hey, this is what my bank account statement says. Yeah. So I think that's the biggest takeaway in all this is it helped me take a hard inventory of where my fitness really was. And we're too shy about it. We don't, you know, he's not, he's, you know, Jeff, you're just a big guy. You kind of look strong, but no, you know, someone needed to tell me I'm fat and that person had to be me. Mm -hmm. And I, and I needed, I need people around me to hold me accountable in that. So when I'm reaching for a bad habit, I'm not, I'm not going back into it because someone who's speaking that in my life, they care about me. They love me. They want to see me succeed. Mm -hmm. So I don't look at it as hurtful. I look at it as, Hey, you don't want to be here. You told me you don't want to be here. So let's get to your goal together. Mm -hmm. Well, it's like that, that'd be the equivalent of tough love, kind of what you're talking about, but it sounds like you're doing mm -hmm. tough love with yourself. So you're keeping it big time real with you because you live mm -hmm. in your body and yep. right. There's people that care about you. There's people that love you. And they, um, some, most of the time they come from a place of, of peace and harmony. Mm -hmm. You got to be careful, obviously of trolls and bullies and that kind of thing. That's a whole other conversation, but right. you like really, you really put your chips on the table and push them forward. I mean, you, you did what's called BTFI, which is beyond the F it. I'm not going to say what the F word stands for. You can just fill in blanks. <laughs> we and get that's it. What you, we get what it. you described to me is exact, the exact definition of BTFI. So well, you have four miles to go in the race, and a lot of people throw their arms up there in the air and say F yep. it, and they quit, and yep. they walk away. And guess what? You're, people sometimes come this close to having monumental success, and they say F it. I can't take the struggle anymore. They walk away. Little did they know if they just kept on pushing for one more week, one more day, one more month, or scrapped, or they made sacrifices, or got through the obstacles for just one more month, a big success rate is right there at the end of the rainbow. And mm -hmm. when you say F it and walk away, you're quitting and walking away from it. And that's one thing, I have grit. I've, I've struggled a lot in my life. I've had a lot of obstacles, and I've had a lot of struggles and sacrifices I've had to made, make, but I just keep pushing forward, because I know I can taste victory is very close to me. And if I throw my arms up there in the air and say F it right now, I'm not going to get, I'm, I'll never know if I'm going to reach the, the high pinnacle that I'm looking to get. But if I go beyond the F it and I make every single effort I need and all the sacrifices extra to get to that point of success, that's just scratching at the surface right now, I'm going to make it. And I'm, you marry yourself to the idea of what you want and you see yourself in possession of that. That's power visualization. That is super important. And you're kind of talking about that. You're kind of skirting around it. And the reason you had that pain and that soreness is because you jumped right into the, into the shark and the waters right from the start. You didn't start doing like, you started off right. Like, yeah, I walked for five miles here and there, blah, blah, blah. That would be like the beginning steps that you would normally take in a situation like yours. If, you, if you're just off the mm -hmm. screen, I never met you. And you walk up and say, hey, I want to start running marathons. I'm, I'm hiring you as my trainer. Where do you want me to start? I'm like, all right, well, when's the last time you ran and how far? Well, I haven't run in 20 years. All right, let's see if we can walk first. So you're going to do a brisk walking program, <laughs> That's which, right. is, which is going to be an interval program. So you're going to go like slow, fast, slow, fast to get right acclimated to movement. You're going to feel some soreness. And then after like 30 days of that, 30 days, then we're going to start jogging. And it's going to be done in layers. But you have more of a kindred spirit and you've got more of a, a, an attack attitude, just like I am too. I'm very aggressive with things and I want things done fast and I want things done right. And I can sense that in you. So you're just like throwing yourself right out there. And you're like, I'm, a, I'm gonna do a marathon on Monday, this upcoming Monday. And you're probably gonna experience that same exact soreness and everything you did before, but your mind is now acclimated to it. So you kind of know what to expect now. This is how we build mm -hmm. strength, internal strength and, and um, not charisma. What's the word I'm looking for? Resiliency. You build it by making the errors and the mistakes and you become stronger based off of that. It's like when you're doing bicep curls or you're doing deadlifts, and you have muscle soreness for four days afterward, it's because you're breaking down muscle fibers and then those muscles, muscle fibers are torn, they're damaged, but then they grow, they get bigger and stronger. 
And the next time your body gets out, gets hit with that same exact series of exercises months down the road, the soreness is a lot less because there's muscle memory built up because your body builds an adaptation to it. It's a neural pathway. The same thing can be said about daily experiences as well. And we keep right. we get all these different things from left field all the time we didn't expect. But the next time that thing comes and hits us, we learn from the mistake we made and then it's easier to deal with it or cope with it and get past it or avoid it altogether. So you're kind of like in that ballpark right now. So what would you say, what advice would you give to someone who's in your situation right now, who feels they have a dad bod, they mean well, they want to get in shape, they want to do good things. What like one or two tips would you give them on changing their life right now or changing their game plan? Sure. If they're, if they're a dad bod and they, let's assume they have kids and they have a spouse. Yeah. Is, and like, like a busy job, like the whole, sh the, you know, the grind, that whole thing. Right. Right. So I, the way I've set myself up for success physically, I've set myself up for more for success. So I'm going to do some light walking the couple of days before I'm taking my kids to the community pool. I'm going to be doing some stretching, really let my muscles get some very favorable, relaxing exercise. Right. Uh, maybe I'll watch a K rail video and do some really good stretching and working out, but uh, that's how I'm going to prep for Monday. I'm also going to watch what I'm eating. It's not a really good time to take in no calories and no food. Like I don't recommend that. Um, so having healthy, steady snacks. So I ate about six times through the day. I try to keep it to, you know, the fist size portions as much as I could. Um, so really not consuming a lot, but you know, pouring something on that burning fire, uh, checking in with my spouse. Um, for me, it's very important, you know, like I think of the movie Rocky and Adrian supporting Rocky was such a big part of that story. Yeah. And when, when Rocky felt supported by Adrian, there was that infusion that was, that was that fire. So I, I checked in with my wife. I didn't as much last time I told her what I was doing instead of bringing it into conversation, not asking permission. I'm the man in the house. She's the woman in the house, but we have shared responsibilities. Mm -hmm. So I asked her what would be a good time for her because I need to set her up for success to support me because that might take me, you know, six to 12 hours to do it, depending on how much I'm jogging, walking, however I'm setting it up incrementally for next week, which I can break down for you afterwards, because sometimes things aren't going to work out exactly. Um, I think for people, they really need to figure out what their mental threshold is. And so that would be my other advice is, is, uh, you know, read, listen, take in information. I'm listening to Goggins while I'm on the track going. Uh, one of my favorite uh, stories is Roger Bannister. Roger Bannister set out to break the four minute mile, but here's two key elements to the story. He didn't set out for Roger to break it, the four minute mile. He set out for mankind to break the four minute mile. That's mm -hmm. key. He wanted to show, he wanted to show and model what was possible, which I'm a huge proponent of. I want to, don't just tell me, don't, just show me if Kevin was fat and out of shape, I'm not going to listen to crap that you're saying. That's just real. <laughs> right. I'm not going to like, it's right. not, it's, it's not, you, you don't have my attention, you yeah. know, but I believe it's important to show people the process. Like I want to show people right now before I'm ripped, before I'm all jacked up. I want to show them now as I'm going through it so they can see and relate to it. I know we wanted this to be live, but I want it to like be in live time, so to speak, so they can see what I'm going through in this process. So I'm glad there's a timestamp on this so they can see where I'm at. Bannister also ran it with two friends named Chris. They paced them for it. Mm -hmm. And so understand the people that you need in your life to pace you for your workout. One being my wife, Regina, who rocks it, encouraging me along the way, but I got to set her up, like I said, uh, working with someone like you. So having that personal training, someone in your life that can guide you along, whether it be a virtual interaction, a, a, a real life visceral interaction, but I believe it's important. So Roger broke that. He was told that it was impossible. His lungs are going to collapse or heart explode all this stuff. He couldn't do it. He modeled it instead of giving a good sermon on it. He showed people himself. He broke it. And then I think now, I don't know what it is, Kevin. I think thousands of people now have broken that. They have. But a lot of people broke it immediately. But it was, but what happened first, the first thing he had to break was his own mindset. And then he had to, and that tore down the mindset of other people because what it showed people is possible, you know, and it's, that's the, and I love the story when you dive in deep and see that he ran it with other people. It's that team together everyone achieves more and he achieved it because other people were pushing him out front so the people that are in your life that you're working out with they're seeing that person that's uh you know all jacked up or, or changed their life or it's a woman who had that after birth you know she has that that body after she oh, gives yeah. a baby as yeah she has a baby right um 
but they don't see the, the you're the Chris, you're the someone behind the scenes that's helping pace them and break that goal. So again, that's probably more than a couple tips, but I think overall is, is, is set out to break your mindset first and know who your support team is. That's great. And I, the word you use, you use, you didn't use this word, but I'm going to use it. It's called accountability. Sometimes mm-hmm. people need that accountability factor more than anything else. I have never, I've actually never had accountability with anybody. No one's ever held me accountable for anything. I never really had to, I never really needed it because I'm very self-motivated, but I look mm-hmm. back at my life and I'm like, I've never, ever, not once, not of all the women I've dated, not of all the friends I've had or family members ever had an accountability partner saying, I'm going to hold you accountable to X, Y, Z. Only when I was like major into my eating disorder and I was coming out of that, I had some people that were checking up on me, but I still didn't have like that constant accountability partner. I can't stress that enough how important it is having an inner circle of people that are, you can always rely on and always come to come to with your problems or situations or to keep you motivated or answer questions for you if you have anything wrong. If Jeff ever has a, a question about fitness or exercise or diet or anything or fasting, he knows for two seconds he can count on me. I'll be there any day of the week. So like, I'm like always an accountability partner for you just to let you know. But I didn't say that before. Right. Appreciate and it. that actually is what fires me up to be that person for other people. So it's like, it works two ways, but having that person to always be there for you in your corner, it just builds, it builds momentum. It keeps you on track. It keeps you motivated and keeps you inspired. And on that note, I think you're out of time. Yeah. I don't want you to be late for your next meeting. I am. I am. Uh, what, what can we give people as far as FF5 uh, send off? Where can they find more information on what you and I've been working on? Let's give them a little bit of traction going from here. Well, the first things first, go to Facebook and look up Fitness for Five page. I've been, um, I've been posting a metric ton of content on there, and I keep doing it every single day. And I have this fun little thing, this streak going for about the past 60 days now where I ask a question every morning, a different question related to health or fitness, nutrition, lifestyle, et cetera. And I like, I like the accountability factor. That's why I ask the question because people like to answer questions about themselves. And I want to know too. I'm curious. I'm, I'm like, do you like to wear sleeveless shirts or tank tops? Do you like orange? What's your favorite color? What's your favorite uh, flower? I mean, I come up with some really interesting questions and it's just very fun. Right. So look for our page, Fitness for Five. Our website is www.fitnessforfive.com. It's F-I-V-E spelled out. Go check mm-hmm. that out. We're going to be launching. Uh, by the time you watch this video, we probably will be launched. I'm going to say right now, I'm going to, I'm going to speak in present terms. We're going to be launching soon. For those of you that are watching this video on the Fitness for Five page, which it will be on there, um, let us know if you have any questions or comments about your situation too, about your dad bod or your situation that sounds anything resemblatory to Jeff's situation. And my name is Killer K-Rail, and I'm hosting this episode right here of it's not even, a, it's not even an ongoing show. Maybe it will sometime down the road. But now I'm just talking smack because I like to do videos and I like to do things that are educational, <laughs> fun, just like Space right. Farms in Sussex, New Jersey back in 1982 when I used to see that annoying commercial. Anyway, Jeff, it's been great chatting with you. Um, Same here, K-Rel. Uh, we'll be in touch. And then um, keep me posted on your stuff. And remember, if you need anything at all, I'm always here for you. Just ask. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a text message away or a phone call. Well, let's make this accountable right here. Let's, let's check in on some progress. Uh, you know where I'm at approximately weight wise. You've been around me um, in person. Mm-hmm. You know what my goals are. Um, you know, I'm going to be doing uh, a half a marathon is really the goal coming back to the goal. Uh, I'm going to be doing that four days a week. I'm going to be doing two in cycling and two in jogging. So that's going to be my workout coming up here um, after I, I hit my peak point again of hitting that marathon. So when would you like to check in and we can monitor some progress? Uh, when- Every week, once a week. At okay. Least. Sounds good. And I would suggest doing at least one day a week of uh, uh, like a body weight um, circuit type training workout that you can do from home. If you have mm-hmm. any kind of tools or something like resistance bands or discs or anything like that, would be even better. Um, but by, by doing like at least one day a week of a circuit type workout where you're hitting all your major muscles, it's going to keep your structure stronger and it's going to mm-hmm. allow you to maintain those longer aerobic bouts of running that you're going to be doing as well. So if you're game right. for it and you can squeeze it in, Jason and I have been creating, and Jill, we've been creating all kinds of short workouts too, seven minutes, 10 minutes, 15. We've been doing resistance band stuff and whatever. Mm-hmm. I can easily drum you up something if you just let me know what you have as far as tools go. And if you don't have any kind of like actual fitness tools, there are some mm-hmm. household items you could use as well. Like water jugs, I use them all the time and towels. You can slide them on the floors. You can use chairs for step ups and dips and things. So really, it's endless. If you just gave me an idea, I think I'm going to create 
um, a whole dad bod series for the Fitness for Five app and stuff when we get going. I love it. You can use me as a guinea pig, brother. I, like I said, now that, now that we're here out in the public, because if I'm out there doing video, that's where my mindset connects because to me, it's business. It's me putting out my profession and saying, look, there is no going back. There is, there is pitfalls, there is challenges, but there's no failure because if you keep hitting it and going consistently at it, you're going to hit results. Yeah. Right? Just like you do in business. But, uh, but yeah, I will be sharing this on my channel too. Um, so I want people to be able to see the progress because I believe it's very tethered well to our financial success. Because if we're out there, we're feeling winded, low energy, distracted, right. uh, tempted to do the wrong things as far as eating the foods that we shouldn't eat. It really helps keep our, our, our line alignment with like, hey, we're focused. Yeah. And physical fitness and financial fitness, we need to probably bring Steve on and do a series on that and how those all tie together. But I'm going to jump on another call. Always a blessing talking with you, brother. So uh, let's hit one of these next week. All right, same to you, my man. Have a great day. Good luck with all your journey. And um, yes, we'll be circling you. back around. To the rest of you out there, have a great, wonderful day. Make sure to get at least eight hugs for eight seconds every single day. Always live in the present moment. Do at least one good deed every single day without any expectation of anything in return. And always go beyond your comfort zone at least once every single day. Those are my questions.